Welcome to Zuri Talks Podcast. I'm your host, Olivia Kinghorst. In this series, we'll be hearing from the industry veterans working at the forefront of digital innovation at Zurich Insurance Group. During this period of intense technological change, insurers are at the eye of the storm. Automation, personalization, and artificial intelligence are reshaping the industry from its very foundations. And as with any period of disruption, there are both risks and rewards. Through these conversations, I'm keen to discover Zurich's strategic approach to navigating the coming decade and how our guests are personally harnessing the power of digital technology in service of their customers. Joining me at Zurich Talks podcast is Stephanie Lloyd, CEO of LiveWell by Zurich. Under her leadership, the digital wellbeing brand has reached new heights. So what does that mean for people like you and I? Let's find out. Stephanie, you began a career in insurance in 2007. Take us back to that time. What have been the biggest examples of disruption that you've witnessed since that period? Yeah, it's incredible if you look back on it. So I think for me, what stands out is innovation around the customer centricity. When I first started, it was about you know risk selection, identifying the risks, so the kind of bread and butter of insurance. And I think we didn't talk enough about customers. And I think all of a sudden, customers are in every conversation and tech is being used to help solve meaningful problems to really innovate for them. Now, you've actually spent a significant portion of your career in California. So what was your experience like living in and really being exposed to this innovation hub? Yeah, you can't talk California without talking Silicon Valley. So I think that that would be, you know, something that's left a mark on me, being so close and you know, as remote work kind of started to take hold of California, all of that kind of shifted. It became Silicon Beach, which was Santa Monica, kind of my neighbor. Um, and I think one thing I really picked up on and loved was was not only the passion that Silicon Valley brought to problem solving, but also this fail fast mentality. I found it absolutely um, exciting to be part of and to see from the outside and then get to have a front row seat and be part of it. So you have a front row seat right now. Uh, at Zurich. So tell us, what have you learned from your time in California that you've actually brought with you today here in Zurich? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that stands out for me is making the best decision in the moment. And usually that's with imperfect information. But I think what I learned is you have to make progress. You have to move forward. And doing so means lots of immediate decisions with as much information as you have, and then learning from that decision to figure out what your next step and pivot is. So I get the impression that you can't sit still. You're always thinking <laughs> about the next step. You've actually developed a particular fascination with creating products that address a modern consumer. How did this interest arise? What sparked that? Yeah, I think at my core, I'm a data nerd. So I think that, um, you know, Early stuff thought she'd be sitting in front of a computer running, you know, regression models and doing data science and looking for patterns. And so I've always been, you know, fascinated with the data side of things, but problem solving. And so for me, uh, that's kind of always been there. But then I got turned on to this, you know, the idea of jobs theory. You know, there are jobs to be done. And then that's when true innovation happens is when you understand what problem in a human's life are you trying to solve for? And Once I kind of caught on to this in design thinking, it really just kind of brought those two worlds together and took off. And this has culminated into your current role, which is CEO at LiveWell. What is LiveWell and how does this digital solution really fit within the broader Zurich family? Walk us through that. So LiveWell is our digital health and well-being uh, proposition, and it's really focused on empowering users. So using technology to empower users to make health a habit and to make progress in their lives on their health and well-being journey. So we're really trying to shift kind of the conversation of insurance and the relationship to be less transactional and more focused on service-led propositions. And, and again, going back to how do I help users, you know, make progress in their lives and solve problems that they encounter? So for us, it's making health a habit. It's helping users thrive, so live their best lives as they progress. And using the, the technology and the relationships that we have as part of the broader Zurich community to really help bring that to life for them. So what I'm taking away is that health and well-being are really at the core of Live Well. 
How are you trying to improve this in an innovative way for your consumers? Yeah, I think we can all appreciate that the the world is getting more complex. And there is, again, back to the data, the science, the technology, things are coming at us at rapid pace. And I think one thing we're looking to do is try to simplify the noise and, and help users understand health from a holistic perspective, but make it really simple for them. Because really the solutions to help users from a preventative well-being perspective is simple actions, right? Sleeping better, eating healthier, moving, getting activity. It's not it's not crazy rocket science, but actually calming the noise and getting really simple personalized tips on what you can do based on your schedule, your activity level, what your goals are, and making it just really simple to execute is at our core. Seems easier said than done, right? All these habits you and I <laughs> like to practice every day. What barriers have you actually faced when trying to implement innovation? How have you tried to jump through these loopholes? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great question. I think one one is risk appetite and uh, comfort with failure is not created equal, right? So within Zurich, across other enterprises, you know, startups play by different rules than, you know, an incumbent that's trying to do something new and innovative. So I would say that that's one area where it's just a different level playing field that we have to operate in. And part of that goes to um, everyone thinks that innovation is like big ideas, big moves, and it's really just a series of slow kind of, like it doesn't happen overnight. And I think uh, there's a lot of patience that's involved that when you're trying to do something at scale and doing something from a global perspective, that can't just happen overnight. And so I think a lot of times we don't, um, when you're innovating in a space like ours, you don't move the larger organization's metrics overnight. And so to keep that focus, keep that patience. And I think for us, that that is something that Zerk's committed to, um, live well in the well-being space. So that helps me sleep better at night. But I think that that is where a lot of folks in my position often struggle, is that continued um, commitment and conviction in, in the proposition itself. You come to the table, in fact, with rather a unique perspective, a founder's mindset. How has that impacted your approach to innovation and what you've just described? Yeah, I probably answered it my last uh, in the last question. But for me, it's it's not big moves, big decisions. It's rapid paced, small decisions. And it's also understanding, and, and I take a lot of this from you know the Amazon leadership principles, which is one way doors and two way doors. I love that. Like. <laughs> every single day, which for me is, you know, we need to make quick decisions, quick moves to keep the, you know, to keep innovating and keep moving forward. But there are some decisions that have more consequences than other decisions. So if it's a two-way door where you can make the decision, if it doesn't work out, you pivot, move forward, those should happen really, really quickly. And I want to make sure I role model that for my team so that my team then goes and operates that way because I'm not there in every setting. So I want to make sure that they take that and move it forward. And speaking of your team, how do you then keep them on their toes? How do you inspire them to be more innovative in their day-to-day role? So I think fundamentally, it's psychological safety. It's You've got to have a culture where, you know, everything is looked at as a learning, not a mistake or a failure. And that's really hard to do because I think a lot of energy in organizations go towards something was a mistake. And so I, I always hate the question like, you know, what was your biggest mistake? Because I don't live my life that way. I look at everything as, what did we learn from this? And if you can orient your whole team around, you know, what's your hypothesis going in? What are we trying to learn from this? And when something happens, it's, what did we learn? Not, what mistake did you make? I think as a whole, the confidence level goes up. You have way richer conversations. You've got folks from other sides of the organization, you know, marketing, talking to actuaries, talking to medical professional professionals, all giving ideas because they feel very safe to share that. And that more diverse perspective leads to a better outcome. Now, you've uh, stepped into this role at Live Well last year, as I understand. And I guess you're still trying to figure out exactly where all the pieces are going. So what capabilities will be key to accelerating innovation at Live Well? What will be your priorities? Yeah, I think... Um, a big one is to make sure that we're 
we're marrying the health sciences with the behavioral sciences. Um, there's a lot of advancements going on on both sides of the house, but I think for us to really have an effect on the end user, the human on the other side, we're trying to have a positive impact the on. The people listening to this <laughs> podcast. Yes. yes, the people we want to thrive. It's how do you bring the science, the best of the health sciences together with the behavioral science to help them actually take the, <laughs> the learnings and the best tips and put them into practice. And so I think that that's a capability that's really key. We have it, but kind of continuing to reinforce it and those advancements are ever changing. So making sure we stay on top of it. Now, a question to the broader group, Zurich Insurance Group, how do you think the company as a whole can continue to be innovative as we look to the next 10 years? For me, to innovate and be successful at innovating, it all is about, it's, it goes back to listening to your customer, making sure that you've got the relationships, that you've got the, your ear to the ground, that you're listening to them, trying to understand, what, again, what problems in their life are you trying to solve for? So it's really making sure that we continue to stay as close to the end customer as, as possible, listening to them and helping them make progress. But as part of that, we also have to make sure that um, we're able to then change the dynamic of our relationship. It can't be the historical transactional risk manager type relationship. It really needs to shift and be more service led and really honing in on that relationship. So I think those are the areas that I would say for us moving forward has to be front and center. So in short, we're hearing customer, customer, <laughs> customer. That's going to be the motto of this conversation. Now stay with us, Stephanie, because we have a few special quick fire questions <laughs> that we've saved for you. The first one is what emerging technology excites you the most? What comes to mind? Okay. Precision health for me. So I know the, the sexy answer would have been generative AI and that we can talk about that for hours as well. But for me, precision health is so exciting. The fact that we can really understand <laughs> at your DNA level what makes you different and how to treat things that you might have, you know, the challenges you might face. Um, personal side, my husband had leukemia in 2021. And by all the tests, we learned that he had a different mutation that meant he needed a different course of treatment than what the standard of care would have been. And to me, just... Right. I mean, the fact that we knew that and we could personalize his care based on that knowledge has just forever changed me. So I'm so excited about precision health and how that'll turn and transform into personal care, all powered by the advancements in AI. What's the one value you would associate most closely with Zurich? Forward looking. I think we can't, everything that's got us to this point isn't going to be what continues us for the next 150 years of success. So I, I really respect and respond to Zurich as a whole, constantly looking at how do we evolve? How do we move forward? Um, so that's really what resonates with me. And final question, what's the one piece of advice you would give your younger self entering the fascinating world <laughs> of insurance? Oh, well, I think you answered it by calling it fascinating. I think when I first joined insurance, I, I thought it was going to be a, a bit stale, a bit conservative, a bit boring. And and coming in, I've, I've found it to be nothing but the richness of the data, the complex problems we're trying to solve. It's just a really exciting industry and you can have lots of careers just inside this one, you know, one company, one in uh, one sector. So I would say uh, remain open, keep an open mind to the possibilities. Um, on a very personal level, what I would give my my younger self is is to bet on yourself. I think so many times as women, in particular, although I know it's it's not uh, restricted to women, we when we see job opportunities, we look at every single line item on that job, and if we don't check every box, we think it's not for us. And I've I've done that to myself, and I've been fortunate enough to be surrounded by my own personal board of directors who have stopped me when I've been fallen into that trap and and encouraged me to stretch further and to go for it. And I would tell myself, I'd want to encourage myself to. Uh, bet on myself more because it we can do amazing things and even if we don't know how to do it today i think we can figure it out and now you've ended up here yeah by betting on yourself worked out a little bit <laughs> so thank you so much stephanie for this discussion and if you've enjoyed this edition of zurich talks podcast make sure to discover more at www.zurich.com slash zurich hyphen talks and if you found these insights helpful make sure to join the conversation over at linkedin using the hashtag Zerk Talks. We'll see you soon and take care.